Welcome back to the Learn English Podcast, the podcast teaching English in context so you can learn naturally. If you've watched or listened to this podcast before, you know that I'm a very big proponent of input. Input is how much time you spend reading or listening to English, and it is directly tied to your English abilities. The more time that you spend getting input or having contact with the English language, the better you're going to be. Because of this, I wanted to give you a list of five films that you can watch so you can get more input. Watching movies and TV shows will help you with your fluency, vocabulary, and knowledge of American culture. Because it is February and it is Black History Month here in the United States, I wanted these films to be films that you can watch to celebrate Black History Month. If you watched our episode two weeks ago, you know the history of Black History Month and why it is celebrated. Because of that, I wanted these to be important African-American stories, part of that African-American experience here in the United States, so you can watch them and, of course, learn English. English, but also celebrate Black History Month. With that, let's begin and talk about these five films. A little bit about these films. I try to keep them a little bit more positive and uplifting. I try to select films that were aspirational or inspiring, films about overcoming adversity, but that have a positive ending and have a positive storyline. Also, I'm going to leave a couple of links in the description of this podcast. I have no affiliation with these links. I have no affiliation with these websites, but these websites are websites that I use to try to figure out where TV shows and movies are streaming, what streaming platforms they are on. The first one is called Just Watch. It is the website, if you live in the United States, you can put in any TV show or movie and it will tell you what streaming platform it is on. If you don't live in the United States, you can use the website watchany.stream. Again, if you put in the name of these films, it'll tell you what streaming platforms in which countries you can find these movies. This works so if you don't live in the United States or if you have a VPN, you can use this and figure out where you can watch these films. Our first film on the list is from 1963 and it is called Lilies of the Field. Now, this is the oldest film on our list and it is a black and white film, but please do not let that discourage you from watching it. The film is about a blue collar worker, which is someone who works in manual labor, works with their hands. And the character's name is Homer Smith. Now, Homer Smith is played by Sidney Poitier. If you don't know who that is, he was an African-American film star during Hollywood's golden age. He was probably the most famous African-American actor during his age. Think of a Denzel Washington type, but a couple decades earlier, really the first to do it. Sidney Poitier was also the first ever African-American to win the Academy Award for Best Actor, and he did it with this film. So the film centers around Homer while he is driving through the Arizona desert. If you don't know where Arizona is, it is right next to California, and it is a desert state. It is hot. So you go to Arizona, and there's very little rain. There's very little water. It's a very dry, arid condition state very dry environment while he's driving while homer is driving he has some issues with his car he pulls over to try to get water for his car he's expecting to leave rather quickly but instead he finds this group of nuns this group of nuns are trying to build a fence but they're doing it pretty poorly they're not professional builders they don't know what they're doing and they're struggling to build this fence he offers to help them, but he does not do it out of the kindness of his heart. He does it because he's expecting to get paid. He helps them, and throughout the film, the rest of the film, is really the relationship between Homer and this group of nuns. The nuns are from East Germany. They don't really speak that much English, except for the head nun, who is called Mother Maria. Mother Maria has a very strong personality. She wants things done her way. And the character of Homer Smith has very strong personality and wants to do things his way. So they clash. They fight a lot with each other. But throughout the course of the film, 
it follows their fights, their arguments, but also the friendship that starts to build between them. Homer helps teach the nuns English. They believe that he has been sent by God to help them build their chapel. And the story ends up being a film about faith, about community, and about second chances. You learn about the struggles the nuns have gone through, the struggles that Homer has gone through, and see how their lives are transformed by the interaction between them. Again, it is a, a feel-good movie. It's an inspirational film. It's a movie that at the end, uh, you feel like the characters have grown. They're in a better place. And, and it's an en enjoyable film to watch for that reason. The second film on our list is from 2006, and it is called Aquila and the Bee. The bee that this is referring to is a spelling bee. In the United States, when there is a competition of students, students are given words and they have to spell them, and that is called a spelling bee. So the film refers to the main character who is called Akila Anderson, who is played by a young Kiki Palmer, and her journey through spelling bees and trying to get to the national spelling bee. There is a national spelling bee here in the United States. It's called the Scripps National Spelling Bee. It's televised on television. It's a very prestigious and very competitive spelling bee here in the U.S. The story starts out with Aquila in her home in South Los Angeles. If you know anything about Los Angeles, um, especially South Los Angeles, you know that this is a very poor neighborhood. Traditionally, it's a very dangerous, high crime, high poverty area, not the best situation to live in. Akila is at her school. She's participating in her school spelling bee and she wins. In the audience during the spelling bee is the character who is played by Lawrence Fishburne. His name in the film is called Dr. Larrabee and he is a a visiting English professor. He just happens to be in the audience and he sees the talent that Akila has, how she's really good at spelling. He thinks that she might be able to actually go to the National Spelling Bee and compete. And the story really revolves around her trying to reach this goal. She and Dr. Larrabee clash, kind of like how in our previous film, the two main characters uh, had strong personalities and fought a lot with each other. The same thing in this one. Dr. Larrabee has a very strong personality. He wants to be very organized, very studious. Akila does not want to do that. And they argue. They they don't always get along. However, on the way to competing in the National Spelling Bee, her community really rallies around her. The members of her community give her support, offer her a place to study, help her with her studies to try to get her to this National Spelling Bee. The story is really about chasing your dreams, overcoming adversity, finding your community, having these people support you to reach your dreams, and it's also an underdog story. If you don't know what underdog is, underdog is when a person or a team is not expected to win a competition. For example, if you think of the World Cup for soccer, or football as it's called in other countries, there are some teams that are expected to win. There are some teams that are always really, really good, traditionally really, really good. They have a lot of money. They have the best players. They're expected to win. And then there's the teams that qualify but are not expected to win. They don't have a lot of money. Their players are relatively unknown. They're not expected to go very far in the tournament. And those are the underdogs. Akila is an underdog in her story. She is from a disadvantaged neighborhood. People from her neighborhood don't go to the National Spelling Bee. Her mother does not have a lot of money to get her a private coach and tutor. Like I said, the Scripps National Spelling Bee is extremely competitive. People who compete in that Spelling Bee, children who compete, study for years before they get there. If their parents have the money, they will have private tutors, they will have coaches, they will be training for years before they get there. And Akila doesn't have that. She doesn't have all of that privilege. She doesn't have all of that background, but she's still chasing her dream and she's the underdog, but we all end up rooting for her and hoping that she makes it to the spell and be and that she wins. The third film on our list is from 2001, and it is called Remember the Titans. This film is set 
1971 in Alexandria, Virginia. If you listened to our Martin Luther King episode, you know a little bit about this time period. This was a very turbulent time in the United States, which means there was a lot of change. There was a lot of conflict. There was a lot of change, especially around race relations. Virginia, if you don't know where that is, it's located in the South and it, just like other Southern states, has a lot of history with race relations between white people and black people. It has a lot of segregation. Again, if you listen to the Martin Luther King episode, segregation is when a time period when African Americans and white Americans were completely separated. That meant that they did not go to the same schools. They did not play on the same sports teams. They didn't even use the same restrooms. Everything was separated. Integration came after the civil rights movement of the 1960s and was when African Americans and white Americans began to intermingle when you started having schools that were for both races, sports teams that were for both races, etc. That is the backdrop of this film. This film is set in 1971, right after the civil rights movement, and it, it centers around a high school football team that is integrating for the first time. That means that the football team was only for white players previously, but this was going to be the first year that black players and white players would be on the same team. The main character is played by Denzel Washington. He plays the coach of the football team, the head coach of the football team. Clearly, he is an African-American coach, and it is his job to try to integrate these two teams, to try to get a cohesive team, a one functioning team out of these previous two separate teams of the white players and the black players. That is the backdrop of the film. Obviously, there are some tensions between the two teams when they first come together. They do not like each other. There is a lot of conflict. There is a lot of prejudice, a lot of stereotypes that people are holding, and they do not want to play together. However, during the course of the film, Denzel Washington's character is able to get these players to put aside their differences, to put aside the beliefs and the stereotypes that they are holding on to and really start to see their teammates as people, as human beings, to recognize that they aren't so different after all and that they can work together, that they can be teammates and even friends. The film itself has a number of young actors at the beginning of their career. You might not recognize everyone's name, but if you have watched American TV shows or movies, you're probably going to recognize at least a few of the faces. For example, in this film, Wood Harris and Ryan Hurst are two of the main players. Again, you won't you might not recognize their names, but Wood Harris was in the Creed movies. Ryan Hurst was in a very famous TV show called Sands of Anarchy. The film also has a very young Hayden Panettiere. She went on to star in Heroes and has been in Nashville, both of which are TV shows that were popular here in the U.S., the film also has a very young Ryan Gosling, who, of course, has gone on to become a superstar. Therefore, it's a really good cast. It has a lot of now famous actors. And of course, Denzel Washington. You can never go wrong with the Denzel Washington film. Again, a very inspiring, inspirational story, a feel-good story, and a really good sports movie. Uh, there's a lot of football films, but this is considered to be one of the, the better football movies. And it, it's a good watch uh, if you're interested. If you like sports movies, this is a great one to watch. The fourth film on our list is Black Klansman. Black Klansman is from 2018, and it is based on a memoir, a book of the same name. The memoir was written by Ron Stallworth, who was a police detective in Colorado Springs, Colorado. In 1972, Ron was hired, and he became the first ever African-American police detective in that city. During that time, he came across this opportunity to come in contact with members of the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan is also called the KKK, and if you don't know who they are, they are a white supremacist racist organization with a horrible history of harassing and terrorizing minorities, especially African Americans. Now, this 
story seems ridiculous. When you hear the plot of the story, it seems like if it makes no sense, but again, it actually happened. And what happened was that Ron Stallworth, when he was a police detective, contacted members of the Ku Klux Klan by phone. Because it was by phone, they did not know what he looked like and they did not know who he was. That is where the film gets its name because Ron Stallworth was a black man and he became a member of the Ku Klux Klan. And so the film and the book are both called Black Klansmen. In the film, Ron is played by Denzel Washington's son, John David Washington. And it tells the story of how he came in contact with these people, how he became a member of the group, and how he was able to disguise who he really was. What happened was when it came time to meet in person, his partner actually went and met with these people in person. So they never actually saw Ron and therefore they didn't know who he was. In the film, his partner is played by Adam Driver and he the character is a Jewish police detective, which again is adding to this whole absurdity, this whole ridiculousness, the craziness of the situation, because the KKK also does not like Jewish people and would not like this police detective if they knew who he was, but they didn't know who he was. So be between a black police detective and a Jewish police detective, they were able to make this one identity, then they were able to infiltrate the KKK or become a member of that group. The film was written and directed by Spike Lee. Spike Lee is an African-American writer and director, and he ended up winning the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay for this film. The film itself really is able to keep this satirical tone, which it means it's able to highlight really the comedy and the ridiculousness of this entire situation, and also bring that social commentary that social aspect along with it. Because of that and the strength of the performances by John David Washington, Adam Driver, Topher Grace is also in the film. You might not recognize his name, but he's been in a number of other television shows and movies. Because of all of these performances and because of the tone of the film, it got high critical acclaim when it came out. It was considered to be one of the best films of 2018 and... It does a good job. It does a good job of telling a story that seems almost impossible to believe. The last film on our list is from 2016, and it is a romantic drama called Southside With You. This story is the story of the first date between a young Barack Obama and Michelle Robinson. It is set in 1989 and tells the story of that summer, that summer when Barack Obama joined a law firm. Michelle Robinson was one of his supervisors, and it tells the story of their first date. They go have lunch, they go to an art museum, and they go to a community organization, talk about activism and how to rally the community to support social change. The story is a little bit of an intimate portrayal. It shows the first days of this relationship between these two people who would go on to become, of course, famous, known worldwide, uh, Barack and Michelle Obama, but what they were, who they were before all the fame. When it was still 1989, nobody knew who either of them were. It tells the story of their personalities, their aspirations, and their shared goals. So you could kind of see how they fell in love with each other, why they were attracted to each other. Part of the critical acclaim of this film comes from the casting. Tika Sumter, it was cast as Michelle, and Parker Sawyers was cast as Barack. The two actors have this chemistry between them, you can feel that they're attracted to each other and why they're attracted to each other. And it helps portray the story of this young couple, why they eventually became a couple, why they eventually got married and how they turned into the people that they were going to become. The story highlights what it was like in 1989 in Chicago, and the city of Chicago plays an important backdrop. The characters, Barack and Michelle, are spending the day in Chicago. It shows what their life was like during that time period and in that city. 
It shows the cultural aspects as they go to the art museums. It shows the food, what they're able to eat, and the people that they're interacting with, and really gives you a glimpse into what that world was like at that time. Like I said, it is a romantic story. It's a love story. It is a feel-good love story. You know who these people end up being, but it's just a more intimate portrayal of what it was like when they were young, when they first met, and who they were when they first met each other. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you found some movie in this list that you would be interested in watching, or maybe you want to watch multiple of them. Please leave a comment in the comment section if you want more episodes like this. There are a lot more movies that I could recommend. There's a lot more episodes I could do like this, but I won't know to do them unless you tell me. So please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if, if you're interested in having more episodes like this. Reminder that there is a vocabulary list in the description of this podcast and of our previous podcast episodes. You will find a list of the words and phrases that I used in this episode so you can begin to use them in conversations. Also, check out those links that I left so you can see if any of these films are on the streaming platforms in whatever country you are in. I hope you can find them and I hope you can watch at least one, if not more, of these films. If you are enjoying this podcast, if this is helping you learn English, please leave a rating on whatever app you're using to watch or listen to this podcast on. That would help us reach a larger audience, and I would really appreciate your support. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. You can always just tell a friend or family member about this podcast, refer us to someone so we can keep growing as a podcast and reaching more people. You can follow us on social media at Learn English Pod. The website is learnenglishpod.com and like and subscribe so you don't miss our next episode when it comes out next week. Until then, keep learning English.